The youngster sobs as she flees out of the public bathroom. After discovering what's between her legs, the mother becomes alarmed. Rosa, Rosemira's daughter, was more to her than a mother and daughter could ever be. Throughout their lives, the two ladies had been life partners who had worked together to overcome all the obstacles that had been placed in their path. She'd been abandoned to her fate by her father, who was an alcoholic who had tortured her both physically and psychologically. When she found out she was pregnant, he abandoned her and took care of her in exchange for not having taken care of her in order to keep her from having children. Despite the fact that she suffered from despair for a few weeks, believing that life was pointless and that she would be unable to bear a child on her own, she eventually recovered. As the months passed, she began to realize that getting rid of that abusive alcoholic was a blessing in disguise, and she felt relieved when she understood that her daughter would grow up in a quiet atmosphere, free of the negative influence of her father at the same time. She has a dark side to her. The challenge was figuring out how she was going to raise her daughter on her own. She had a job as a cashier in a supermarket, but she was well aware that her employer would fire her if her pregnancy prevented her from continuing to work without providing her with any sort of payoff and thus forcing her into unemployment at a time when she most needed it. She had no choice but to accept her employer's offer of unemployment benefits. Rosemira, on the other hand, was a lady of faith, and God had not abandoned her. Following her unemployment, she was welcomed by a group of nuns who took care of her for a short period of time. Following her delivery, she provided her with all the food she required, as well as paying her electricity, water, and gas bills. As a result, Rosemira and her baby, a beautiful girl whom she baptized with the name Rosa, were able to move forward in their lives. And when Rosemira returned from her break in a fetal position, she was greeted as a cashier at the grocery once more. In addition, the income she received from the nuns enabled her to continue to meet the financial obligations she had for herself and her daughter, who was cared for by them while her mother was at work. The next major issue that Rosemira and her daughter had to deal with was the possibility of the girl's father returning at any time. They were shocked when the man resurfaced in their lives, claiming custody of his child. Rosemira simply did not comprehend her ex-actions husbands, and she was adamant in her refusal to give him custody of their child. For the reason that someone who had abandoned her because he did not want to be the father was now returning to claim her kid for himself. That didn't make any sense. And Rosemira had a sneaking suspicion that there was a sinister cause behind the sudden explosion of parenthood. He was so eager to keep the kid that he attempted to gain custody of her through the courts, claiming that Rosemira, since she worked all day, was unable to provide the baby with what she required. He, on the other hand, had obtained a certificate of recovering his alcoholism by deception and was now a wealthy man who could provide a better future for Rosa. Ultimately, the judge was persuaded by these arguments, and after several hearings, she ordered that the infant should be returned to her mother. Fortunately, Rosemira's prayers were answered once more, and just a day before she was supposed to give the baby to her father, the man was apprehended while participating in a police operation to destroy a deadly baby buying and selling ring. It was because of the shady company that the man had been able to make so much money in such a short period of time. And it was for this reason that he desired to be granted custody of his child. He was not interested in providing her affection or educating her, but he already had her negotiating for a large quantity of money with a foreign couple, which he had arranged in advance. Rosa was a baby at the time, and it's unlikely that she was aware of everything that had transpired. Nevertheless, Rosemira was always under the impression that those battles had been fought together, and that it was Rosa who had bestowed upon herself the necessary courage to meet and overcome all the challenges that destiny had set in her path to becoming strong. She never concealed anything from her, even as she got older and more independent. Yes, she was telling her the complete truth, but she was doing so with extreme caution. It was when her father abandoned them and even attempted to sell her as an infant that she felt the most helpless. Rather than instill hatred in her heart for her father, his intention was simple, to share with her what he felt to be an important achievement in the relationship as mother and daughter. Rosa grew up as a powerful young woman as a result of these circumstances. In contrast to so many other youngsters who grow up to be terribly influential and who behave and even think, not on the basis of what their hearts tell them, but on the basis of what others say. Rosa did not allow herself to be swayed by the latest trends and instead acted in accordance with the ideals instilled in her by her mother. She was guided by what she felt to be good and avoided what she considered to be bad, 
regardless of the taunting she could experience as a result of her actions. Rosa and Rosemira's relationship was a one-of-a-kind for all these reasons. They shared a high level of complicity, were able to communicate perfectly with one another, and rarely had a disagreement. Despite the fact that their economic condition was not ideal, they learned how to find happiness in the midst of adversity by appreciating the simple things. And one of the simple arrangements they made on a regular basis was to go to the park every Saturday and Sunday. A little conversation or distraction ensued while they had an ice cream cone and took in some fresh air. One of these walks had place during the unthinkable occurred. She was about to confront one of the most difficult challenges of her life up to that point. Rosa had a strong urge to urinate after they'd been in the park for about an hour. Using a public restroom did not sit well with her mother, who objected to her daughter doing her business there. As a result, she believed that they were ideal environments for the spread of diseases. As a result, she invited the young lady to join her at home. Rosa, on the other hand, insisted on staying a little longer in the park, and Rosemira agreed to allow her daughter to urinate in a public toilet while they were there. Rosemira wasn't sure how long it had been since she'd heard her daughter cry, but it wasn't long at all. And before she had a chance to react, she noticed the girl racing towards her, distraught and sobbing. When her mother saw what she was hiding between her legs, she became alarmed. Rosa's legs were moved by a cynical body that was cool and creamy in texture. It was nothing more or less than a snake, nothing more or less. Because of the park's proximity to the city's forest reserves, certain animals were able to freely move between the two green spaces. This was, in fact, one of the primary attractions of the park, where people of all ages came to see squirrels, exotic birds, and even rodents, among other things. However, she desired the bad luck that had been discovered lying in the toilet bowl of a public restroom. In fact, it was a venomous snake that gripped Rose's leg as soon as she entered the toilet. Not one of these creatures is cute or innocent. Rosemira reacted by sprinting to her daughter's side, and with no consideration for anything other than the well-being of her child, she took the snake in her hand and hurled it into the forest where it died. Rosa remained unharmed, despite the fact that she was terrified, thanks to the miracle of the venomous animal not biting her. However, if Rosemira had been bitten at the time of removing the snake from her daughter's body with her hand, she would not have realized it because of the adrenaline that was coursing through her body at the time. However, a few minutes after the incident, she began to feel unwell and discovered the bite. And then, like she'd done so many times in the past, Rosemira sat back and watched over her young girl's life. Rosa was the one who took charge of the issue, displaying an unusual level of maturity for her age. She approached for assistance. She was able to track down a family who offered to drive the woman to the hospital in their car while she recounted what had occurred to the physicians. Because of the girl's detailed description of the snake, the doctors were able to administer the necessary anti-physical serum and the patient and save her life. Her name was Rosemira, and she managed to overcome that terrifying ordeal very fast. Additionally, Rosa contributed to the improvement of her mother, teaching her how to be the person she had learned so much from. She also prayed to God for Rosemira's health and well-being. Rosemira had to take a few days off from work to recuperate at home before returning to the office. Rosa was able to enlist the assistance of the nuns, who had seen her so many times as a kid, to assist her in caring for her mother during this period. As a result, the mother-daughter love relationship was irreversibly sealed, demonstrating that love is capable of anything. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and leave your thoughts in the comment box. Subscribe to our newsletter to learn more stories like this, and feel free to share it with your friends and family. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.